Coming up this week on the Double T Insider, it has been 20 years since the Lady Raiders hoisted the trophy and raised the banner. The national championship team reuniting for the first time since 1993 last weekend. Double T Insider has full behind-the-scenes coverage of all the events, including the game from the memorable weekend. Baseball opened up their season last week, and Double T Insider's Nia Joukowsky caught up with some fans and found out what they like about opening day. Much more coming up on the show, so sit back, buckle up, because the Double T Insider starts now. Let's go. The Double T Insider is brought to you by the College of Media and Communication and is entirely produced by students of the college. Welcome into yet another brand new edition of the Double T Insider, everyone. I'm Joshua Cook, joined by Erica Taylor, as this week we come to you from the United Spirit Arena, where more than 8,000 fans packed the house this past weekend to honor and recognize the 20-year anniversary of the 1993 Lady Raider National Championship team. And Erica, that was not the only history being made this weekend. That's right, and what better way to relive history than by going heads up against longtime rival Texas. We'll have more from that game later, but first we'll get started on how the Lady Raiders started off their 20-year reunion celebration. It was signing day inside Club Red to help kick off the weekend celebration of the 1993 National Championship title. Marsha, Krista, Michelle, along with the rest of the 1993 Lady Raiders squad, took part in signing basketballs, throwback jerseys, t-shirts, and posters. Saturday's luncheon was coupled with former and current Lady Raiders enjoying good laughs and reminiscing while watching the 93 championship game between Texas Tech and Ohio State. I can't believe it's been 20 years. That's a, that's a really long time. That's aging us a little bit, but, um, but we're really excited about being here and it's, it's great memories and we're really just looking forward to a great weekend. Well, it's always so exciting and uh, I think one of the things that um, I'm always amazed about is how quickly they pick up, you know, and they check on each other and see what's going on in each other's worlds right now, but then they automatically go back to special moments or things that they remember about the championship, and it's always fun just to sit around and listen to them talk. Now every championship team has something that no other team quite has, so what was that special something about the 93 Lady Raiders? Just because of how um, unique our team was with uh, our chemistry and, and uh, you know, we had a superstar in Cheryl Swoops, but yet the rest of us really understood our roles and were very unselfish in, in, um, in, in allowing her to be the superstar, and, and she was amazing at it, and she didn't really care to be that, but it's just what her role was and um, I think the fact that our chemistry was so good it's so hard to portray now um, with like my, my own team for them to understand how important that is for you to be able to do extra special things or extraordinary things such as winning a national championship. Well, I think you can ask any of these guys and, and me too that one of the things that was the most special for us was how excited all of West Texas was and um, you know it'd be one thing to win the championship but Another thing, if there's so many people that get so much joy out of that, and I think for us to have provided that for West Texas and Lubbock and Texas Tech was by far the most important thing that we did. A lot has changed in women's basketball between now and 20 years ago, but could the 1993 champs keep up in today's game of basketball? I think when I look at the game, um, obviously the athletes are just incredible. I mean, we didn't have any Brittany Griners, you know, and, um, and I, I think on that level of it, you know, it, it, the game is stronger, faster, probably more physical, all of those things. Um, it, but as far as just how it's spread out, you know, that it's just the TV exposure is so much different. And um, maybe they, I don't really know, you know, as far as them playing back to back and things like that. But I just think the game it certainly has evolved. There's no doubt about that. You know, you're always going to say we're going to get it done, but I'm pretty sure we'd get smoked. <laughs> Unless Swoops is really on top of her game, but I don't know. Um, I, I just think it's different. I just think it's so different. I mean, I really do think the athletes are just so much more physically um, blessed, I guess. I don't really know. I just, um, you know, I thought that we were a really cohesive team and really worked the ball well, and we were a very good team. Um, I think now maybe the individuals, there's, there's maybe more than, you know, one Swoops out there now. 
Even though it was 20 years ago, Coach Marsha Sharp talks about her favorite moment in 1993 and the importance of reconnecting with the past. Probably my very favorite moment is when we came into the stadium because I was just so amazed that there were 40,000 people there. I mean, it never crossed my mind that that many people would be uh, in the football stadium waiting for us to come home. And a lot of them had waited uh, for a long time. I think we got there between 8 and 8.30 that night and they had been there since 5 in the afternoon. So, you know, what an amazing uh, commitment to that program. And, um, you know, we knew at that point uh, how excited West Texas was going to be, and uh, we lived that out the entire spring. And honestly, I probably enjoyed that a little bit more because I was so stressed uh, trying to get through the tournament and make all the right decisions to help them win that uh, finally I could enjoy it a little bit more after we got home. I think Christy Curry uh, has a great feel for history, and she always wants to try to put history around the current team. And for me personally, I think it's one of the most important things in sports to really understand where you came from and where the program has been and all the things about that program that you're representing now. I think it, it adds to the amount of pride that you have in what you're, what you're doing at Texas Tech, for instance. And um, she's been wonderful to embrace the past and to move forward into the future. And uh, we want to really make sure that we let them know that just as much as we want them to embrace what we did in 93, we're all about what they're doing in, in 2013. We want them to get in the tournament and advance as far as they can, and we're going to be some of the biggest fans pulling for them, and we're really excited about their season and the things that they're doing. Reporting for the Double T Insider, I'm Joshua Cook. Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll give you a glimpse of the 1993 Lady Raider basketball season. But first, here's the Texas Tech trivia question of the week. On the 1993 Lady Raider National Championship team, there were 12 players on the roster. How many of those came from West Texas? A, seven, B, nine, C, 10, or D, five? The answer to that question is coming up later in the Double T Insider. Don't go anywhere. More Double T Insider coming up after the break. Texas Tech is on the rise. Now a National Research University a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say. With pride, guns up. During the 20-year reunion celebration, many memories were shared between former Lady Raiders and members of the program. Here's a trip down memory lane about the 1993 basketball season. 20 years ago today, in 1993, February the 17th, the Lady Raiders beat all, uh, Texas in Austin for the first time. If you came to Texas Tech and you were a Lady Raider, your number one goal was to be Texas. Um, and I think that's what we all just focused on was we have to win this game. Um, no matter what else happens, we have to win this game. But it was an exciting thing to watch this team. And I emphasize that they were a team. They had a superstar, but they were a team. People played, I was watching the highlights while we go, and they passed the ball. They passed the ball. It wasn't a dribbling exhibition. They passed, passed, passed. And they made baskets. You know, but we really didn't look past the next possession. It was always trying to, to do something special each possession and so um, when when I took the ball out and uh, passed it to Krista and the time ran off, that's when I knew that we had done something very, very special. Small town kids doing big time things and um, you know I think that makes it even more special. Uh, we were just kids that were gym rats, loved the game and believed in what we were doing. Well, I think we were the surprise team. Uh, we were not the number one seed in the West Region, Stanford was. And when Colorado beat them, I think we felt like we had a great chance to step through that door and go to the Final Four. Um, after we got there, we played the number one team in the nation, who was Vanderbilt at that time, and then a great Ohio State team. So I think probably it helped us because we played in the underdog role the whole time. We, were, we wore black jerseys the whole time, which means that you weren't the one that was expected to win. And I think it probably helped us. It took some pressure off, and we were just there to try to put, prove to people that we belonged. And um, it was a great position to be in the entire tournament to play 
from that role, and uh, I think we embraced that. So, you know, I don't think people expected us to win, but yet when they watched Cheryl play and, and the supporting cast around her, I don't think it really surprised people at that point. And uh, we're just so grateful for the opportunity to keep playing and, and took advantage of it. Here is to the 30 year reunion girls. <laughs> Other conditions did not stop Tech fans from supporting Red Raider baseball on opening day at Rip Griffin Park. Double T Insiders Nia Dukowski chats with fans about their favorite part of opening day at the park. What's your favorite part about opening day? Um, just baseball starting back up, you know. I don't know, I always miss it throughout the year, so it's always a good day. It's so exciting. I grew up, my dad was a baseball coach, so just the fans, everything about it is exciting. Uh, I mean, I'm a big baseball fan, so the first game of the season is always fun. Um, I just love tech spirit. It's always great to be around Red Raiders. I just love baseball. I'd watch baseball anywhere, but uh, but I'm excited about tech. I think Tim Tadlock is going to do a good job, so there's always that optimism of a brand new season. Well, it's just kind of nice to get the spring started off with a good baseball game, and it's America's sport. Tell me a little bit about your experience as the mascot. Oh, favorite player. You know, I don't have a favorite yet, but maybe after today I will. Yes, because pretty much a majority of them are freshmen, so yeah. you guys can all be fresh together. We are, we're fresh. Tech hosted the 2013 Brooks Wallace Memorial Classic at Danlaw Field at Rip Griffin Park. Tech played a total of four games during the weekend while only allowing two runs in all four games. That's a new school record. If you can throw a first pitch strike, that's just with slider or fastball and then come back with the opposite pitch the next few pitches, then you're going to do well. I felt good about our club going in tonight. I felt good about the lineup. Uh, at the same time, there's some guys sitting over there that are ready to go. And, uh, we did have some really good trips early. And Zach Davis, Alec Humphreys went out there, true freshman, just great job. Now back on the hardwood. February 17th was the exact date that the former Lady Raiders faced off against longtime rival Texas. And just like in 93, the Lady Raiders came up with the victory. Here is the recap of the showcase inside the USA. Pump fakes and goes back to Baker, right of the key. Now she'll drive it on McGee Stafford, contact, no whistle, but Kelsey lays it in anyway. Right wing pass to Smalls, pump fakes, drives the baseline, reverse layup is up, and good! Oh, how did she do that up and over McGee Stafford? And also getting around Chastity Purcell on the baseline, and then the reverse layup. As the Longhorns clear, that was Haddis throwing it ahead, now Sanders has it, blows another layup, driving to the basket, too strong, off the window, here's Morris, bounce pass ahead to Brown, layup good! What a pass by Casey, and the crowd loves that one! I'm not going to pass away at midcourt. She chases it down. She drives. She lays it up and good. A run. Here comes Smalls. Left wing pass to Morris. Catches. Fires. Good. From the corner, Casey Morris. And Texas Tech's up 10. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's welcome the four members of your 1993 NCAA National Championship Lady Raider basketball team. Athletics director T. Jones and his wife Phyllis. Athletic trainer Natalie Stedman. Graduate assistant Terry Wright. Assistant coach Lynn Edwees. Number 55, Mike Atkins. Number 35, Michelle Thomas. And number 50, Melinda White Solis. Number 15, Nikki Heath. Number 23, Noel Johnson. Number 24, Janice Perry. Number 13, Deanna Kersey. Number 25, Kim Prude Wilson. Number 20, Stephanie Scott Gerber. Number 34, Sydney Clinger Kimmel. Number 21, Krista Kirkland-Gerber. And number 22, Cheryl Swoop. The head coach of the 1993 National Champion Lady Raiders, Marsha Sharp. Patterson hands it off to Morris. Casey left wing tries to answer with a three and she does. And that's a big one. And Tech's got their two point lead back. 
Now Jackie comes and sets the screen, but throws it up top, does Morris to Baker, and she tosses right corner to Brown, driving the baseline, stopping, popping, dropping from about 12 feet. Two, Baker's got to fire a long one, and she nailed it from Muleshoe. Kelsey Baker at the shot clock buzzer. Senior guard, China Brown, becomes the newest member of the 1,000-point club. And so Earlier, we asked the Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week on the 1993 Lady Raider National Championship team. There were 12 players on the roster. How many of those came from West Texas? Your options were A, 7, B, 9, C, 10, or D, 5. One of the answers that is not correct is A, 7. The answer to the Double T Insider Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week is coming up later in the show. Don't go anywhere. Texas Tech is on the rise. Now a national research university, a growing campus steeped in tradition. Seven straight semesters of record enrollment. Wind research that's unrivaled in the world. The best trained and educated students for today's jobs. And to all this, we have just one thing to say. With pride, guns up. All right, everyone, here's your answer to the Texas Tech Trivia Question of the Week. On the 1993 Lady Raider National Championship team, there were 12 players on the roster. How many of those came from West Texas? Your options are B, 9, C, 10, or D, 5. The answer is 9. There were 9 players on the team that were originally from West Texas on the 1993 National Championship team. Be sure to check out the Double T Insider every week for a brand new Texas Tech trivia question of the week and see if you can guess the answer. With the show winding down, we take a look at what's ahead for Texas Tech Athletics. Red Raider Baseball travels to Miami to face Florida International for a two-game series starting on Monday. The first pitch for Monday's game is 5 p.m. and Tuesday's game is at 2 p.m. Red Raider Basketball is set to face off against Kansas State Monday night in Manhattan, Kansas. Last meeting was a 68-59 victory for the Wildcats. Tip-off is set for 6 p.m. and can be seen on ESPNU. On Wednesday, Lady Raider Basketball will face Oklahoma State at the United Spirit Arena. China Brown led the Lady Raiders to victory with 15 points over the Cowgirls in January. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. on Fox Sports. Net. Number 27 men's tennis will play at home this Friday and Sunday as they compete against Miami and New Mexico in the ITA kickoff weekend. Friday's first set is for noon and Sunday's serve is set for 2 p.m. Red Raider softball doesn't have to go anywhere to compete in the Texas Tech Invitational. On Friday, the Red Raiders face off against Jackson State at 3.30 p.m. and then McNeese State at 6 p.m. On Saturday, the Red Raiders will once again play Jackson State and McNeese State. Start times are set for 1 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. respectively. On Sunday, the Red Raiders play Northern Colorado at 1 p.m. to conclude the Invitational. Number 21 Lady Raider Tennis will play two home matches this weekend facing SMU on Friday with a start time of 4 p.m. Then on Sunday, Tech Tennis will face number 74 Wisconsin. First serve is set for 10 a.m. Tech Baseball is home to play a three-game series with LaSalle. Friday and Saturday's first pitch is set for 6.30 p.m. and Sunday's first pitch is set for 1 p.m. Saturday, Lady Raider basketball will travel to Manhattan, Kansas to play Kansas State. The Lady Raiders won the last meeting 59-50, to with Kelsey Baker and Jackie Patterson each scoring 14 points. Tip-off is set for 2 p.m. Also on Saturday, Red Raider basketball returns to the USA to play TCU. Behind Jay Crockett's 13 points, the Red Raiders defeated TCU 62-53 to back in January. The game starts at 3 p.m. and can be seen on the Big 12 Network. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show of the Double T Insider. Thanks for watching. Also, be sure to go like us on Facebook, search for Double T Insider. Also on Twitter, at Double T Insider, and never miss another episode. For Erica Taylor, I'm Joshua Cook. Have a great week, everyone.